Hey everyone, so I've been having a lot of fun with this game. Um, this is my third video on the series and I'll just show you what the game is doing right now. So um, we can just start placing these chips on here. And you'll see that uh, once we get four in a row, it can now detect the win and it gives you that message that red wins. Uh, let's try it. Uh, that was vertically. Let's try and do it uh, horizontally. And you'll see we have four black chips in a row here and it detects the black winds and it gives that message. So um, let's go over to the code and um, let's just talk about the things that are different here now. Um, I cleaned up the code a bit and um, this create circle we just sort of uh, just sort of re reduced the amount of lines of code in it. Um, color is now set to it's a conditional it's a conditional um, operator here and um, if the uh, basically we're we're now looping doing one for loop going up to 42 and if the index is less than 21 we're returning red for the color or else we're returning black and um, a few different places I just um, uh, eliminated some code that uh, you know we didn't need there and um, here uh, rather than before I, I created six arrays or sorry I created six variables at the top for the color, for the uh, sorry for the distances, but um, we really didn't need that, so we just just put them in here as a string. So um, this fine landing square is now returning. Well, it's still returning an array and uh, with a you know the string of the distance here um, and the uh, the square number. Um, so let's just talk about the things that are different now. So um, basically, if we go down to our sort of main function here. Um, so what we're doing is we have a new variable which is move count. Okay, So it's counting which move they're on. And um, you know the earliest a Connect 4 game could possibly one is on the seventh move. So for example if there's three red moves and three black moves and then another red one with the, you know, the game could be one. So um, every time you know a chip is placed uh, move count is incremented by one and then if the move count is greater than six well then we are checking for a win here we're checking for a win and this is going to this function is going to um, return true or false to this result right here and if result equals true then we run this congratulate function so um, let's go over to the uh, check for win uh, function yeah, if I can find that here, so it's right here, and um, I'm not I'm not sure that this is the best code in here. I mean, probably probably it could be better, but anyways, it's it's doing the job right now of checking for vertical wins and also checking for horizontal wins. Now, of course, in Connect Four, there's also diagonal wins, um, but I haven't written any code for that now. So let's just look at this. Um, so inside this function, first of all, I've just um, I've created this function inside the function. And the reason I did this was because um, in two different places, you know, for the horizontal and for vertical, we're, we're checking if there's four in a row. So we're either looping through the column or we're looping through the row to see if there's four in a row. So because we have that same code in two different places, what I did was I put it into one function and then we're just calling this function um, from both places. So um, Let's uh, let's just go past this for now. And the first thing we're doing is we're checking for a vertical win. And the first thing I need to do is because because we're checking for a vertical win and horizontal win inside this one function, um, I needed to maintain uh, the original squares. You know the square that they dropped it on. That's what this is. This where they dropped it on. I need to maintain this variable um, in something in another container. And then this one is going to get manipulated. So after we check for the vertical win, um, if there wasn't a win, then we're going to check for a horizontal win. But when we check for the horizontal win, we still need this original variable. So basically what I do is I take this one and I store it inside original square. And then there's going to be changes made to this one. And then when we go to check for the um, checking for the horizontal win, you know, we set square back to original square. So we put square back to its original value on when it was passed into the function. So um, yeah, square is set to original square. And then we're saying 
um, while square is greater than 7, okay, square is set to square minus 7. So no matter what it was, whether it was, um, you know, dropped on square 8 or 15 or 22 or 29 or 35, um, we're subtracting 7 from it. Um, we're subtracting 7 from it until it's a value that is um, greater than 7. Because if it's greater than 7, for example, like if it's 8, okay, if it's 8, this will evaluate true. And then after that, we want to do one more subtraction after that, which is 8, which is going to go to 1, which is the top row. So basically, this just takes whatever the square was, we're going to do this while loop, and we're going to subtract 7 until we get the square that's on the first row, okay? And then once we've got the square that's, you know, that's um, on the top row, then we're going to um, loop down, okay, and check for four in a row. So, for example, if they started with, um, you know, the highest square, which is 42, okay, well, 42, we're going to bring that down to 7, and then so for i is set to 7, well, i is less than 43 i equals i plus 7, okay? And so it's going to go through all those squares, 7, 14, 21, 28. Mm -hmm. And it's going to run this, four in a, uh, run this 4 in a row function. So let's take a look at that function. So inside, um, inside the, the 4 in a row check function that we're calling right now, um, remember, so for example, if they were 42, well, we've already brought that 42 down to whatever, you know, 35, 28, so on, okay, down to 7, okay. So um, if, okay, we're grabbing the element here, if the, uh, if the seventh, sorry, this, yeah, if the seventh div um, with the ID of, if the div with the ID of 7 has the class of color, okay, we're passing the color, so for example, if it's red chip that was played, then this is red chip. If it has the class of red chip, then win count, sorry, win count is set to win count plus one, okay? And then after we do this, we're every time we're checking if win count is set to four. And if it is set to four, then we're going to return true here, okay? And and then, you know, the function that call, calls it is also returning true. And that's going to return true um, back to back to whatever down here. Um, if this is true, then we're running the congratulate function, and the game is over. So um, if I can find where we were, um, yeah. So this four in a row check. So um, basically, you know, this win count is starting at zero, and we want it to go one, two, three, four. And if it gets to four, then it, uh, it returns true, the next one returns true, and the game is over. Okay, but if the next square is doesn't have the class of red chip, um, then you know win count is set back to zero. It starts over at zero. So it needs to have four in a row. And um, if we just open up the browser here, so if I play a chip and we right click here, we'll see that um, this chip has the class of red chip. Okay, so for the vertical win, it has to have red chip, red chip, red chip. So this will be one, two, three, and if the next one is black, it gets reset to zero, and then one, two. So it has to be. It checks if there's um, four in a row. Um, so yeah, that has to. Even if there's a black one, it gets set back to zero. Start at one again. So that is for the um, vertical win. And then we set square back to original square, so we get the you know accurate value for what's which square it was on. And um, the code for this is a bit longer. It could be because you know I'm a bad programmer, but anyways, it, it does the trick. So what I did was um, I first just set up an array of the left squares right here. So um, if we go over here, so right here is one, eight, fifteen, twenty-two, twenty-nine and 36. So I set up an array of the left squares and then we do this, uh, we run this function. So jQuery.inArray, so it checks that 
if the square that was passed in, if it belongs to left squares, okay? And if it does belong to left squares, then what this function is gonna return is the position of the array. So it might be it might be zero for the first position, it might be one for the second position, or two. Okay, it will return the position. But if it doesn't find it in it, it's going to return minus one. So this uh, jQuery.inArray function, it doesn't return false, it returns minus one if it doesn't find it, which is um, like the index of in JavaScript. So um, if in array is greater than minus one, which means it found it in the array, then we check for the horizontal win. Okay, so if the one that was passed in, if that's one of the left ends, left ones, we can start checking for the win right away. And if that returns true, then you know the game gets won. So let's suppose that let's suppose that um, you know let's refresh here. If it was dropped here, well. This one is 36, so 36 is going to be in the array, so we can go to check for horizontal win. So let's check out um, that function, it's just down here. And um, we set win count to zero. This gets passed in the color in the square. Win count gets reset to zero, just in case it wasn't zero. And then for i is set to square, so supposing it's one, for i equals one, i is less than uh, 1 plus 7 okay that's gonna be you know looping 7 times for i is set to 7 i is less than sorry i is set to 1 i is less than 1 plus 7 which is 8 okay i equals i plus 1 and then we are doing the 4 in a row check okay and if 4 in a row check returns true then these all return true and the game's won and the 4 in a row check is um, it's the same basically okay same as before and um, let's just go so if it wasn't one of these ones in the array well what I want to do is um, for example if they dropped right here well now this is not going to be in the array so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract one from this position until and we're going to keep subtracting one until it is the one on the left and then we can check for the horizontal win so um, right. So while um, jQuery in array, you know, equals minus one, which means it wasn't found, okay. Then um, then square is set to square minus one. We subtract we subtract one, and then each time we're checking. Well, each, yeah, each time we do this, we're also checking. Um, if it doesn't equal minus one, so for example, if this was um, if this was like this is position 37 right here. If this was 37, then the next thing we do is we subtract one, which is 36, and then we check again if 36 is in the array. So in this case, with 37, then we subtract one. Then this is going to be um, true. It's not going to equal minus one because it's going to find it because it's going to be 36 and then we're checking for the horizontal win okay and then this is going to return true if it's four in a row and then you know the game is won um, the last thing I want to talk about is the congratulate function so if we go down here um, if this you know when we check for win this gets a very it gets a it gets a value returned to result if result is true, then we run the congratulate function and we pass in the color that was just played. So let's go to that function and this one's this one's pretty darn simple. So um, congratulate, it takes the color. Um, if the color was set to the string of red chip, then we have this array of 10 elements and you can see what's in there. Or else, um, if it's not red chip, then it's black chip. And then we use this array of 10 elements. And then we also have um, tiles, this is also 10 elements. And these are the tiles that we're going to put the letters on. So if we just do this really quickly and get a win for red, you'll see, okay, those are the tiles that are on, and there's the letters we put on them. Um, just really quickly, we'll go over to the CSS that did that. And it's really simple, the H1. 
uh, we have a size for it and the text line center that puts it in the middle okay um, let's see now so um, after we do that we are uh, we set a timeout function and we need to set a timeout or else all of this will happen before the piece even drops so we have to let the piece drop and then we're doing this set timeout and this function right here is going to run after 500 milliseconds and what happens is that after 500 milliseconds um, all of the all of the chips all the elements with canvas their CSS visibility property is set to hidden and then we just we simply loop through the tiles so um, you know simple for loop from 0 to less than 10 here so looping 10 times and then um, we're grabbing the element so uh, pound sign and then tiles I so this is getting all of the different elements and then we're setting the inner HTML to um, inside these h1 tags letters and then passing it in the position right here I think that's all I want to talk about for this one so thanks for listening